This is going to be wonderful. pretty hard to, you know, top that song. But. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to put the mute on that bad boy. 
All right, so pendulum. The period is a time for one uh, complete cycle. So if we're taking a look at this here, from here to here is not a complete cycle, is it? That's half a cycle. And so from here to here would be one full cycle. How about from here to here, how much of a cycle is that? Quarter. It's a quarter. Okay. Half, this would be three quarters and back to a full cycle. And sometimes questions are going to ask you based on, you know, the pendulum swings from its maximum displacement down to its equilibrium position in 0.1 seconds. It might tell you that. Well, from that, you should know what? That would be a quarter of the full period. So I'm going to have to multiply that by 4 to get the period of my pendulum. So do not be, you know, fooled if they give you information like that. Uh, you know that you're talking about a full range of motion. Now the period is equal to 2 pi square root L over G. Okay, as the song sang. So what is L? It is the length, and specifically from the top to the middle of the pendulum. Okay, so that's where L is measured to, right to the middle of the, the mass that is being suspended for the pendulum. Uh, for our intents and purposes, the, sw the string is considered to be negligible weight for the most part. All right. Listening. Um, now the energy of this pendulum pushes forward. We will have potential energy at maximum displacement, kinetic at equilibrium position. Okay, so it's similar to your spring. It's going to have an oscillation between potential kinetic and potential again. Now, if damping is negligible, the total energy is considered to be constant, and we can say that the total energy is equal to the potential plus the kinetic. Okay? Now, at maximum displacement, which of these terms would be zero? EK. And at, ma or at equilibrium position, this would be zero. So it fluctuates back and forth. If I'm not in either maximum displacement or equilibrium, I can describe the total energy using this equation. Because it will be potential plus kinetic. All right. Now this shows, actually we have to turn off light, the derivation of the period equation. Okay. It's based on... Um, when the angle of the pendulum is small, the pendulum is in harmonic motion, and their storing force is equal to the negative mg of sine theta. So we were already looking at that formula previously. Now we want to remember there is an angle limitation. So just as the song was indicating, if you go beyond a certain angle, you can no longer use the small angle approximation, and that's not going to work. Sorry about you, Mr. Grieson. Okay. So, if you follow it through, you end up with the period being 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Now, notice some factors that are not part of this period equation, and that is mass. Okay, so whether the mass that is oscillating is, you know, 2 pounds or 2 tons, it's not going to affect the period of the oscillation. Now, the energy is going to be similar in a conservative system uh, where your potential is converted to kinetic and then back to potential, back and forth, and the total mechanical energy of the system remains constant. So this is, you know, very similar to the oscillating mass when there are no non-conservative forces acting. Now, let's just take a look at this. We'll do a little bit of uh, experimentation. Okay, 
So, in this app, we can manipulate a few different uh, quantities. So, let's manipulate some quantities and see. And that's not the one I want. Okay, well, let's do one thing at a time. First of all, let's see what it's like just as it is. So we're going to deflect it to 25 degrees, let it go. And then we're going to start the timer and see what sort of period value we get. Okay, so the period value is 2.8703 seconds. Okay, so everybody remembers that? Okay, so now let's change the mass to double. And we're going to do the same deflection. Okay, so <laughs> it is the same. Okay, so the mass did not change the period of the pendulum swing. Make it shorter. Okay. Well, if we make it shorter. Okay, so now we're changing something. So we went from one down to, say, one. Start the timer. And is the period value different? Yes, yeah, so the length of the pendulum is uh, a pertinent factor. Ooh. Now we're also going to, let's try it um, on a different planet. Let's try Jupiter. Okay, so is Jupiter going to have more gravity or less gravity than Earth? More. more. Okay, so if I have a higher value for G, the gravitation, okay, then what sort of effect has that on period? It decreases it, okay? A smaller... Well, there's going to be more gravitational force acting, and that is going to cause a smaller period in my oscillation. All right. Well, if G equals zero, okay, then it's just like it's in space. Okay, well, it's not changing speed, but what we will see is that the acceleration is going to be towards the middle all the time. Okay, so we're just talking about circular motion now. If you've got, um, you know, this type of system. So let's hear that. Now, let's put it back to, let's say, the moon. Whoa. So let's go to 25 degrees, and we can already tell that it's going to be a longer period of time, okay? So 6.958, that's significantly larger period than previously. So both the length of the pendulum and the gravitational constant uh, play a factor. Now, later on, we are actually going to do a lab where we take a pendulum and we will know the length and we will measure the period and in that way, the unknown variable will be the gravitational constant. So we will be able to calculate the gravitational constant in Cochrane. All right. Okay, now, over time, we do have friction. Okay, now let's go back to Earth. We're back to Earth. Okay, and we're going to go 25. Now, without friction, we know that this will just oscillate pretty much forever. But what if we have a little bit of friction? Then we are going to have a damping effect. Okay, but... Well, no, the period, let's just start it again. 
It's happening through the period. Okay, so the period actually stays relatively constant even though the amplitude of the oscillation decreases. Okay, the frequency and period stays relatively um, constant. Okay, eventually, and what's happening is you're actually, the pendulum will be, um, I guess, going slower in a way, but it will travel less distance. So it's always proportional. Okay, and as it gets down to zero, you will see that um, it will have a very small oscillation, but it's going to occur in a smaller period of time. So again, remains constant. So let's crank up the friction a little bit more. And we can see it is slowing down. But take a look at our value. It is staying relatively constant, isn't it? Okay, so that is a good demonstration of that property.